your hands in the air if you're real as me. Welcome back to the MBH podcast. Money buys happiness. Miami buys happiness. We're here once again. And no, it's not a host episode, all right? It is not a motherfucking host episode. The boys are here. They're on doing the fucking duties before we get into the duties. But now that I just said doing the duties, now I reminded myself to tell you guys to do the duties. Like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Comment bullshit, eh? Whatever you want. Comment anything you want now. Ernesto will get back to you. I just gave you. I just gave you another job. Ernesto will be the one getting back. I will to you get guys. back to you within the next probably couple of years. So just leave a comment, and um, <laughs> we'll get to you at some point. We'll get to you at some point. But yeah, listen. Not a host episode today. Um, we got Daniel Mazzone coming on. Legend, absolutely iconic artist yeah. out of Toronto. Uh, he moved to Miami, but you know Toronto. Toronto man's. They call him the next Andy Warhol. Is that actually what they call him? Yep. <laughs> Unless no. he called himself that. <laughs> I'm gonna ask him that. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean, bro? In, in his, in where'd you, where'd one you of see his, that? One of his bios, uh, it said he was like the the new generational Andy Warhol. Okay, so, see, like I, the thing is, but is it, that you can't self proclaim that. So I'm gonna have to ask him if someone actually said that or he decided that because. But then here's the thing: know, I'm like, even if someone said that, you, I don't know if it depends who said it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. No, but bro, like he he, he makes fucking cash, bro. Listen, bro. <laughs> you understand? The, from what I'm seeing on the gram, yeah, man, it looks like he's making cash. Yeah, and the art is sick. The, the art, art is cool. so sick. The art's I love sick. it. I don't it's know. Like a, it's like um, it's different than anyone that I think that we've had on. Like the, his art, his style. Okay. You know what I mean? Like like Richardi has his style. Yeah. Peter has his style. Yeah. Which I think Peter's is most similar to what he does. And then Diogo, Di- it seems like a mix of almost like Peter and Di- like Diogo a little bit. Because he also does like the sculptures and like the big bears and stuff like that. That's that's my like new favorite thing. Like those bears and shit. The sculptures. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're making sculptures, like yo, you're doing art different. Well, you know why what I mean? Because okay, there's a paint, there's a canvas, pop, 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 a couple layers. I'm not trying to like downplay it, but you know what I mean? It's like that's the classic move. Yeah. But if you're doing the sculptures, he has really cool ones. You're these doing little, things little, different. They're bunnies, no? These little bunny little bunnies? looking things or some shit. Bro. So I think that's dope. And then he also um, he also moved out to Miami. So my my question is, when's anyone ever gonna bring us a gift on this podcast? Not that I'm trying to be like, bro, don't come on our podcast. You're not bringing us a gift, but don't like, come on our podcast unless you're. Not <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know. I, like, when the fuck's someone gonna bring us a fucking bro? I mean, technically, like technically, we should be. Uh, no, no, you're should. wrong. I know what you're gonna say, and you're wrong. We should be giving them gifts. Like Jay, we should be giving them gifts, right? Nah, Maybe a like nah. probably no. Nah. Like, listen. This podcast is generational. Yeah, no, it has influential potential. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. This podcast has influential potential. This is a generational podcast. Yeah, but no, but I, but us being from hospitality? No. No. The hospitality is coming on here. I know, but it's not like someone's going to come bring us a $30,000 piece of Amazon, art. Amazon, we got him purified water. You see that right there? Yeah. That's called hospitality. It's true. <laughs> Where I want to We got sculpture. the Red Bulls, he's got the water. I wanna, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Health, wealth. See what I'm saying? Health and wealth. You need to have both. Health and wellness. No. Okay. Anyways, yeah. Listen, we don't expect a gift. We don't. I don't expect gifts. I like a gift though. The per- the first person that comes and gives us like, I'm pretty sure we've gotten gifts before, like a bottle of wine or something. We've gotten that shit. Before. No, but I'm talking about like a sculpture. <laughs> Holy fuck! I want a skinny sculpture. A sculpture. No, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying. I want a skinny a skinny sculpture. They're like twenty G's. Bro, not the make. He didn't make it for twenty G's. But he's not gonna. He's not gonna like just give it to you because it's, it's like he made it. And it's cheaper. Like that's not how it works. <laughs> no, like I usually sell this for fifty k. But you know, I like it didn't take me long. So here, listen. It's okay. Listen. Okay. We did our first espresso review today. That was that was that big. was fun. Um, any of you out there? Yeah. That have like a coffee company or brand. Yeah. Or if you know like a sick espresso spot in Miami. Right yeah. now. Yeah. Like we'll go. We'll go mm-hmm. review it. And yeah. we'll go fucking tell them what's good straight up. Well, like, okay, you got to give some context to that. What do you mean? We're, we started vlogging. We started vlogging. Okay. Yeah. 
we started vlogging because people wanted to understand what the fuck we do, what we're doing out here, what we're up to, our investments, our business, how we work, this and that, whatever. The pods, the behind the scenes of the pod. Um, so we brought our editor, Jason L, gave him a camera and said, fucking get to it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start releasing some vlogs. I don't know the frequency. I don't know any of that yet. We're just literally filming, testing, seeing what we're going to do, figuring out our editing style, our filming style, how we want to release them. But, uh, but yeah, it, now for the context, inside of the vlog, we want to start doing espresso reviews. It just makes sense. Because if you know us, you know we're espresso guys. And it only makes sense. There's no one doing it. There's no one giving those raw espresso reviews. So we had a company. Shout out my guy, Chris Battaglia. He sent me, um, he sent us. Um, That's a good WAP right there. Yeah, great WAP. Solid WAP. He sent us uh, He sent us some espresso beans from his company, 416 Coffee Co. Um, two bags, two massive bags of just some fucking ground beans. We were gonna, And then we're just like, yeah, let's just start doing reviews. So we did our first one today, this morning. Um, I think it was pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, there's, you're just gonna keep. We're just gonna keep building off it. You know, it's, my it's tongue our first is time kind of doing my like tongue review. is completely burnt. I rather that my I, tongue is completely burnt, burnt like to sh to shreds, burnt to shreds. Damn. I yeah, feel, I know it's I brutal. Feel sorry for that, you right now. Ow. I feel bad. Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. Well, I rather I much rather do an espresso review than fucking dust twenty pizzas. Like twenty five. Yeah. No, no, I was going to say the challenge side of things, but... Oh, well, that too. You're still going to have to do that. Anyways, let us know what you want to see us do, because, like, yo, I'll do some wild shit. I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good question. What the fuck do you guys want to see us do for the vlog? If there's anything specific, it could be literally anything. Like, whatever. You want us to streak down Ocean Drive, Ernesto will do it. <laughs> it's going to be you, eh? Anything fucked up we do in the vlog, it needs to I'll do to that be... at, like, 5 a.m. <laughs> no, but that, that, that's not the... I mean, it's actually that's probably actually pretty good. Here, it's good because people yeah. are leaving the club. Yeah, that's fucked. There's so many things you can do, you know. But yeah, um, it, I, I, I'm actually down to skydive. To be honest, I know you guys have both tried. Yeah, I've done it. It's sick. Skydiving is like a. It's gonna like it'll change your life. But like you could die, right? I mean, you could die like podcasting. I've never heard of anyone die from podcasting. But you need to do it once in your life. What's even more? Actually, this is fucked. I I, I don't think I told you this part. When we pulled up to, to go, bro, we pull up to the farm. There was a fucking ambulance picking somebody up off the floor. Why? So I'm like, what the? Bro, we just pulled up. There's an ambulance in the field, on the, the grass. Turn quick, out. I'm like, oh. what the fuck? Whatever. Um, and then, we, so obviously, like, we asked him, like, bro, what the, what the fuck's this? Bro, yeah. like, Imagine you're pulling up first time, ambulance in the field, picking somebody up proper. They said uh, it was actually somebody doing a solo dive. And Without I don't, anybody with them. Yeah, yeah and yeah. like he fucked up, but he like didn't die, just like broke a leg or something. He just fell? I don't know, bad landing. Okay. Bad landing, whatever, and broke a leg, but. I would have fucking. It was brutal. And then it's fucked because like, okay, so you see that, whatever. You pay, you do your thing. And then you have to go sit through this like training video. Yeah. And it's like one of those like 19, like the school 1995 ones, like, yeah, yeah. like school videos. Yeah. Like the guy's rocking a crazy stoosh, yeah. like old school clothing, whatever. And bro, it's just like every two, three minutes in the video, they're telling you like there is a risk of death. Yeah. There is a risk. See, like that's that's an issue for me. You but, know, bro. <laughs> I think that's an issue for me. Is it? Yeah. Is that like where you turn back around? It's just like uh, but they have to say it legally. They have you know? to say it. And you actually have to sign away, right? Yeah, you sign. Yeah. 100%. But then you, like, you look at the odds. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I was Googling the odds of dying on the way there. <laughs> I so needed to know. I needed to so know, fucked, right? Bro. No, you, want, you just want to know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. So I'm Googling the odds on the way there, whatever. You know, something stupid. Like more people die of shark attacks every year than... I mean, bear people die of shark attacks. Okay, but the number is extremely low. Okay. But more people die of shark attacks than they do of, of fucking uh, skydiving accidents. Okay. So, you know, I, that made me feel comfortable. I mean, just <laughs> I, I wouldn't look at those stats when I'm going there. You know, like I would. But you need to, bro. I wouldn't have done it. Even if it said it was like one in like I don't even know what what it was. What was it? What I was the chances? Listen, I don't know. I just know that it said more people die by sharks. So I'm like, bro, if more people are dying from shark attacks, and I know that's an extremely low number. Then I know this is like super low. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, I guess. I mean, and then bro, like, and then I'm talking to the guy, like, I'm talking to to the guy who's like attached to me. That guy I'm, jumps probably five times a day. No, I asked him. I said, "How many jumps you do a day?" He says, "Between ten and thirteen jumps a day." Oh my god, which is insane. Like, I can't. I mean, you it probably, probably doesn't even catch a buzz anymore. I was just gonna say you probably like become a little more like a uh, You're just insensitive to what's like happening. insensitive yeah. to the to the situation. But like, still ten, you know, ten jumps a fucking day is fucked. Was, has there been any casualties at the in the Innisville one in Canada? I'm gonna probably say yes. I don't know, but if I am like, I think if the like. You flaunt it if there's none. Like you know what I mean. So the guy, the guy in Steve's video, or whatever at Fort Lauderdale, they're like, yeah, we've never had a casualty. That that that's like that's something the first impressive. Time heard, yeah, yeah. No, but that's something impressive. So like, if if you have like, if you're a skydiving spot and you have no casualties, you're gonna like make sure people know that. Yeah. And if you're not making sure people know that, that means some like in my yeah. head, that means someone's died there. It's still a fucked marketing tactic. Like, come, like, bro, no one ever died before. <laughs> Like just I come mean, on in, bro. No one died yet. Yeah, like not yet, bro. Not yet. At least, like you're good. Yeah, no, it is. The a one fun. down the street, bro. Two guys died. You know, so it's like I wonder. Like, you do, pick you need, do you need like, do you need like a fucking license to 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 do the jumps with people? No, to start to a company. Like start a fucking. Oh, for sure. There has to be something involved there. Really? Like? <laughs> you want to start? Like, what is it? The Skydiving Association of Ontario? Yeah, you probably have to Canada, do a course like, or some shit. <laughs> okay, bro. You know? Sick. Yeah, yeah. Of course. But at the end of the day, there's a fucking. Guy flying the plane up, and everything else is butter at that point. I mean, I wouldn't say butter. <laughs> like, everything <laughs> else is just you're, butter. You're throwing people out of a plane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's the most butter part, them just flying up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. No, you said everything else is butter. <laughs> <laughs> everything else is just butter. And by the way, if you're listening, and there's a lot of Americans that listen, butter just means, if it's like, yo, that's just butter, that just means like, it's just like easy. Like it's easy. Yo, that's Soft. butter. Yeah, that's Soft butter. like butter, you know? Exactly. It's just soft like butter. It's just butter. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll do it again. If you want to do it again, I'll do it again. I'm going to ask Daniel Manzone if he wants to go. We'll throw a fucking statue out with us. A if, fucking sculpture if, out. If Daniel Manzone walks in here and says he'll go skydiving, yeah, we have to go skydiving with Daniel Manzone. Okay, fine. All right? Yeah, like I'm, I'm almost there. Like I'm pretty much down. No, you're down, but I'm yeah. just saying like it just but makes But one it little more... thing can fuck up everything for me. You know what I mean? Okay. Like if I see one thing or I hear one thing, <laughs> like that's... Yeah, but then just don't start like don't start searching things. You know what I mean? No, I'm not gonna search nothing. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let everything come to me. But if something different that I don't want to see or hear comes, yeah, well, we're, I'm not doing it. Like if I pulled up and there was someone in an ambulance getting scooped off the floor, buddy, like I'm, <laughs> I know that I'm was looking fucked. at everyone and I'm going like this, we're that turning was, this bitch around. That was fucked to see. I can't believe that happened the day. The, the fucking one so day just it went. The, like, but what are the chances you actually caught someone being injured? Pit? So think about it now. Yeah. All the times you didn't catch that happen. No, I I think that's like a, that that was like a lottery chance. You know what I mean? It just was like a one in like however many times that happens. <laughs> you know what you're I mean? Really, you're really banking on the the chances. The ch <laughs> <laughs> Listen, less people die from fucking shark attacks, bro. Shut up. No, I bro. think it'd be I think it'd be cool. No, I'll be but good. Like, we'll do it. Um. Yeah, anyways, vlog, we're going to keep doing a bunch of shit. I don't know. We're testing it out. We're just testing the waters. It's tough because like, like we're new to Miami. Like we, we, It's not like we have like all kinds of fucking plugs here and shit. Yeah. But, but that like, kind of makes it cool in a way. Yeah, and we're also cool. like, and we're also just like trying to show you guys like the behind the scenes of like what, what we actually do and like who we are. You know, obviously we come on here, we spit the facts, we spit the truth. We're pretty much the most reputable news source. The most legitimate. Global. That's for sure global news source <laughs> in 2022 but um but yeah we want to show you guys what these fucking what these two mans are up to so yeah we're just testing the waters but it should be good i think it'll, i think you guys will fuck with it we're really just trying to be as authentic as fuck we're not like planning anything there's no i mean you know what you'll see for yourself when you guys see the fucking videos there's really zero planning we're just kind of fucking going with the flow yeah. but i think that's kind of what that's the thing because when it comes to vlogging I feel like I remember vlogging back in the day. It was super raw. Yeah. First of all, usually it was like somebody with like a like camera this, on their own like face, this. whatever. Yeah. But then I feel like it, like vlogging in the modern day turned into like pure planning. Just like know? a movie. Yeah. 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 Like everyone's like pure planning things, yeah. which like, I mean, whatever. Listen, it's, it's, it's engaging. Like I'll yeah. watch those two. I think it de even depends like on your audience and shit too. Like, yeah, but I think, I, mean? I think like, we're trying to keep it like really yeah. raw. Yeah. But that's what our audience likes. They like it raw, eh? They like it raw. Yeah. You know what I mean? You guys said it, not us, <laughs> eh? 
<laughs> guys, these guys want to raw, raw dog it. Fuck. Listen, if you want to just to fucking raw dog a fucking vlog, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do, bro? In other news, Marcelo uh, left his... Uh, his book of jokes. His book of jokes, and there's not even a, a joke in it. Marcelo. No, no, there's one joke. There's Latino one. power. <laughs> what was that joke? Okay. <laughs> Bro, you want to know why Dominicans are so good at baseball? <laughs> there we go. Over here, we eat potatoes. <laughs> Over in the Dominican, they eat platano. You know what platano is? I'm doing a pretty good job, no? That's literally like word for word what he said. <laughs> I know. I don't know how I remembered that. Platano. So, so you, yeah. So anyways, yeah. He yeah, left, you, you left a fucking joke. That book he showed, he's like, bro, I got all my jokes in here. There's no jokes. There's one, one joke. joke. It's there's one fucking joke. And it's, and it's the joke he said, and you said it. So that's why you just left the book here. <laughs> like I already used the joke. <laughs> like, Fuck this right. book. This book's finished. And it was actually the food truck outside. <laughs> <laughs> the lady, <laughs> the lady. No, no. When we were here yesterday, I went to go order a burger before the fucking episode. And she looks at me and she's like, this is yours, right? And she gave me the joke book. <laughs> this guy was so stoned after that. <laughs> That's so what I was going to say. He just, get, he just paid with his joke book. He's like, when I order a <laughs> when I get a burger here, take my, how much take is it? Jokes. Bucks? Here's the jokes. Here's the jokes. <laughs> Anyways, that's in our hands now, Bello. He got, he got stoned. Right after we left the episode, he went to order food, Got was smoking a fucking dupe to his face, and then, yeah, left the joke book. He that, paid? No, he paid with the joke with book. The jo- three jokes. Three jokes for a burger. It's not, <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> Platano power. Bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyways, that's in our hands now. Yeah. We might do different things now. I might I give know. it to Daniel Mazzone. <laughs> See, bro, I get you. Here's a new idea book, bro. Uh, you know? We need we need a Platano power painting. Yep. Yep. Uh, Damn, we're going to enter, my, um, enter Miami FC tonight, too. That's, that's that going to be, be sick. Yep. I get to wear my pink jersey finally. I don't think you needed. I'm gonna look to like wear. I'm from here, like just like I'm just gonna look like a Spanish guy. <laughs> you already do. <laughs> no, I know, but with the jer- with the jersey, I'm gonna literally look like I'm from Little Havana, bro. Like, <laughs> you are, you already look like a Spanish guy. <laughs> Should I wear the shades, the pink shades? <laughs> oh, <laughs> the pink shades are fuck. Oh, I think we got a, we got someone here. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Mazzone. Did I say it right? Daniel Mazzone? Is it Mazzone? Uh, yeah. Do you say yeah. Mazzone? I mean, it's Mazzone, but most people, people say Mazzone. Mazzone. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm going to say Mazzone. I'm going to say Mazzone. I'm going to say Mazzone. Thank you for coming, man. Thanks I appreciate for it. Me. Yeah. Um, appreciate your time as well. Yeah. We're we're Toronto boys. Yeah, we came no. out here. Yeah. Are you living here now? Um, for a little bit. I mean, we bought a house. Both both of you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. So we okay. bought a house out here more as like an Airbnb rental kind of thing, cool, yeah. just to get in the market here because it's so good. The market here is yeah, amazing right, right now. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, man, I was I was obviously just like, I've I've followed you for a while. I've known your stuff for a while, Thanks, right? Man. Because just in the Toronto scene, you're huge. Yeah. yeah. But I want to know how you got out here. Yeah. And why you decided to come out here, and why you're you're living here, right? Yeah, yeah, I moved here. I have a visa to be That's here. amazing, yeah, yeah. bro. Why don't you guys try and get a visa? We're, we're working on it right now. We're working yeah, on it right get now. An yeah. Yeah, you have write-ups and all that? That's it. Yeah, that's good. So yeah. we're working with some yeah, people yeah. right now, but... Um, who, yeah, well, I can hook you up after. Oh, you guys, that's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. So we always preach that. I can write a referral letter for you, too. Oh, yeah? Because you're going to need two. Oh. From, like, a current person uh, he, living here? Oh. Yeah, you'll need a, ref- a referral letter. I did, from people that know you in the U.S. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially me being another artist. Yeah. I can, I can write one for you. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Look at this. Right. 10% for okay, your manager. We're done here. We're done here. Um, no, but we always we always preach how much we love Miami and the opportunity yeah. here and the energy yeah. here, the people here. So I want to hear from you why you decide to come out here and why you decide to stay as well. Yeah. I mean, listen, Toronto's always home. It's, it's, it's where I grew up. It's where I learned to do artwork, you know, but... Um, it was really hard to get supplies there during really? COVID. Oh, it was impossible. Yeah. Even now, there's a lot of the, the shelves are empty. And, you know, thankfully, as an artist, I was really busy. And, um, you know, I needed to create. And I just, I actually applied for my visa a year before because I wanted to be able, because I do so many shows in the U.S., yeah. you know, you don't want to get in trouble with taxes. So I was trying to do things properly, have a visa, and then, you know, do things appropriately. But then I just happened to get a call and they said, hey, listen, your, your visa went through. Your visa's ready. It was during COVID. You know, everything was locked up there and yeah. there were no art supplies. It was a bit depressing, to it be honest. Very depressing. As an artist, not good. Yeah. You know, especially if I have to create things that are, you know. Can't get expired or anything. No, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty down and this wasn't the greatest time. So I came here. Lots of sun and lots of art supplies. 
So, you know, I've also done my Art Basel show eight years in a row here. Yeah. So, I, you know, I have friends here. I have, uh, you know, um, a, a big community of people that also purchase my artwork. So, yeah. It was yeah, easy it was plug just, in for you. Yeah, it was just like the natural progression to come here, I think. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel like people appreciate art here more? No, no. no? Um, I think just as much, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. I mean, Toronto love artwork. I mean, it's a big city. There's a, a you know, a long cult standing culture of artwork there. Yeah. Here is actually, um, I would say that Miami, there's a big scene for artwork, I think, for like street art and that well, sort like of Winwood stuff. But the culture actually is not even as big as, as really? Toronto. No, I mean, I think cities like New York, Toronto, Chicago, LA, and all that sort of stuff, they, those ones are big. I mean, art's been around forever there. Here, there's, I mean, people know that like Winwood has artwork, but I, I, I find... Even now, I mean, even a lot of the people's homes that I'll go to, they either have not much art or it's, it's really? just kind of like generic. Yeah. It's not, not you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's something you can get at, I don't want to say like an Ikea, but. <laughs> it's no, true, no, like those big, uh, like those, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just because. Of course. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, to be honest. It's just, they don't really understand art, so they don't know much about like, who's making art, who's yeah, out there, yeah. who's doing things. and but th But that's changing now that you find you know, more New Yorkers and stuff and people from Chicago or Toronto, a lot yeah. of people from Toronto here now. And uh, the, the more that happens, that's how culture builds, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, and you kind of get to be like a, a sort of an early, um, like in the scene earlier, I guess, in a way. Right, you right. Said eight yeah, years yeah. you were doing Art Basel. Eight years, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. How did how did With 2,000 people on my show last year. Wow. Crazy. Like, how did, you, how did you first get involved with that? Well, um... How was it? Oh, um, this uh, this lady Dana. You know, she's a friend of mine now. I, I had just met her back then, and uh, uh, just through friends. And she says she could coordinate something for me. So I, you know, put a show together, and uh, and it was uh, it was a hit. You know, it was it was really cool. It was my first year, and I think at that point I only. I, I mean, I've been doing art professionally now for twelve years. So at that point I was doing it for about four years. So yeah. it was. I think I had like two other shows in New York before that, one in Toronto. So this was sort of my first like, you know, big thing, yeah. big thing, yeah. you know. And it went well. And now I've done it every year for eight years, and it's just gets. I, just like I, a I need an even bigger space. I had to tell a thousand people not to come. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay, I want to go back. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I want to go back. You said you've been doing art for professionally twelve years. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you want to talk about no, it no 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 it's fine it's fine no it's funny actually so, so i'm laughing because it's something like completely different so i mean do you know how about how i started doing artwork no, give, no. Give, give well, i'll give you a little i'll give yeah. you the the, the coles notes okay. of it yeah, yeah. so um you know as a child i you know i always loved doing artwork my mom was an artist is an artist as well still and she did stained glass and, and painted porcelain dolls and so you know i you know earliest childhood memories were you know creating artwork with my mom and uh and then as a teenager you know you know things happen and uh i was homeless for five years i slept on the streets at queen and john in the park there the grange wow. park behind the ago and um you know grange park right yeah yeah yeah, exactly. yeah. so there i mean uh, subway trains movie theaters and like wherever i could and there was a big rave scene back then so like if not to stay outside you would go to a party all yeah. night and there was other street kids who went so i did that for about five years and you know i always used to think homeless people were were judged by the people walking by as being lazy or, or drug addicted you know but there's uh in most cases i would say 90 percent of the time it's mental health issues or abuse at home you know uh -huh. so i said wouldn't it be nice if the story of your life was on your skin i was just to think that and that way when people saw you they wouldn't judge you so then later on uh, i got off the street finished high school 22 didn't do any artwork i mean it just wasn't on my mind i had to catch up with life i mean i yeah, dropped yeah. out of high school you know so I did that, worked at a restaurant, um, I took some uh, university courses in business, and um, I worked in a fine dining restaurant. One of the guys who owned the restaurant was a stockbroker. And I said, you know, wow, these guys look pretty happy. Yeah. You know, they got all, you know, <laughs> nice cars and wine and this and that. Little did I know that it was probably just all the booze everybody was drinking. Right? <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> I don't know if they were happy. They were yeah. just, everyone was just drunk all the time. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, so I thought that, and I think maybe the fact that I didn't really have much growing up, I think maybe that attracted me a bit. And I thought, 
you know, my, my family didn't have a lot of money, and then I went from that to having zero money. So I thought, you know, I didn't want money to be a concern for me. So I thought I saw these guys, and I thought, oh, man, this maybe this is what I need to do. So I approached one, and I said, you know, do you mind if I – how do I do what you're doing? So I took my course to Series 69, WME, you know, to work on a trading floor. And I worked at nighttime, and I volunteered during the day on a trading floor. And then once I passed all my courses, the market crashed in, in 2008. Oh. And I started doing mortgages for a couple months, and I was just, I was just miserable. Finance yeah, wasn't yeah. for me. Yeah, I hate it. I, I you just it. thought it was gonna be okay because the money. Yeah, that was I coming mean, in. listen, I, I, I was, I was good at numbers. I understood the finance, but it was not something I was ever gonna be happy about. Yeah, you know. So I thought, man, I'm I, Monday comes, I can't wait for Friday. Yeah, and then Sunday comes. And I can't I have anxiety, so I'm waking up 50 times because I'm freaking out because tomorrow's Monday. Yeah. So it's like you know, so many people go through this, and and you, you're, you're you're sitting there wishing for 80 percent of your life to disappear. Yeah. And you don't enjoy. Which is so sad. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, most people have this one or two things. Most times, one thing. It's usually a vacation once a year. Once a year for if one they week. They can afford to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they're stressed out about that, and then. You just have one thing to look forward to. Yeah. The the big thing. I mean, obviously we have little events and meeting yeah, sure. meeting yeah, friends yeah. and all this sort of stuff. But so I said, you know, maybe it's not realistic that we all have a job we love, yeah. but maybe it's realistic that we find something we love to do every day, right? So I started creating artwork again. Nice. And I didn't know what I was gonna do, and I thought, I don't know if I'm amazing at painting, but I always loved collecting old newspapers and, and and this sort of thing so i said well if i took the techniques i learned from stained glass and what i loved about stained glass and and my idea of being able to tell people stories on their skin i started creating these mosaics of people with their stories all the info all the pieces of paper are information yeah. about them or or a story i want to tell or something that happened to me or sometimes people commission me because they want me to tell a story that they are passionate they have, about, yeah. right? Yeah. So I started doing uh, collages. I didn't show anybody. I was just doing it for fun. Yeah. yeah. Didn't plan on. No, yeah, just didn't. Because I thought, okay, whatever. I'll keep my job. And I'll just do this every day. And I was excited. And I was actually a much happier person. I, Even though I had a job I didn't love, I was happier at work because I knew, you know, in a few yeah. hours I'm going to be home and I can create artwork and you know, life is good. So about four or five months went by. Didn't show anybody. And my friend who had the restaurant, you know, he's uh, sees the artwork and he says, wow, these are really great. You know, do you mind if I hang one and sell it in the restaurant? I said, I don't know, man. I don't know <laughs> if anybody will like this. Because I was just, I don't know. I just, I, I you didn't even it. You didn't even think of that a possibility yet that someone would No, buy. no, I, I didn't. Yeah. I think the biggest part I thought was they were pretty, they're pretty pricey for me to create. And I didn't think anybody would pay more. Than what you had to pay. <laughs> and if it was a little bit than more than it cost me, then is it worth? What it? was yeah. the point yeah. to do all that yeah. work? Yeah. Like if it cost me three thousand, sorry, if it cost me three thousand, and uh, and they pay thirty five hundred, I made five hundred dollars yeah. to do all that work. Yeah. I just keep it. Yeah. So, you know, I said, okay, take it, but like, I don't know, man, just <laughs> just, just just take it. But uh, I don't think anybody's gonna buy it. And I said, you know what? Maybe don't sell it. So he takes it, he says, ah, shut up. So, <laughs> so he takes it, and for a few days later, I'm on the couch watching TV, and I didn't have much money back then. It was a small apartment, you know. He calls me, he says, hey, I sold your piece. I go, dude, I told you not to sell it. He goes, can I, can I swear? Of oh, course, of course. He goes, yeah, don't be a bitch. There's $15,000 sitting for you here. Stop. Yeah. So that piece, how much would that have cost you to make at the time, I guess? Oh, yeah, we're still like two, three thousand. Yeah, yeah, but it you were like fired up. Materials. No, I mean, listen, it was actually not the money. Yeah, it was. I wanted to be an artist since I was a kid, and you know, I think we we grow up with this mentality of like we all need to have this like super job. Like not all of us, but I think yeah. as children, you know, you feel like oh, I got to be a lawyer, I got to be like a CEO, yeah. I got to yeah. be a doctor. Gotta, no, just be what you're good at, you know. I went to be an artist, and I didn't think you could actually have a career and do something you love and be able to pay your bills. Yeah. So I didn't focus on it, and I think that was just sort of the validation. It was not the money at all, you know. So 
I actually used all that money to, I got rid of all the furniture in my house. I literally got rid of it. And all I had was a bed, and I turned the whole studio, uh, the whole apartment into a studio to work. Uh, yeah. I didn't even have a sofa. I got rid of everything. Did you keep your job after that, like your daytime job? No. So actually, yeah. on the way to pick it up. Yeah. On the way to pick up the, uh, oh, so he says this, and I said, I'll see you in 10 minutes. I hung up, and I, I, took, I remember taking a taxi to go meet him, and I remember calling my boss at the mortgage place, and I said, Hey, Eddie, you out there? <laughs> What's up, Eddie? Shout out, Eddie. <laughs> no, I said, uh, hey, Eddie, told her what happened. Listen, I've always dreamed of yeah. being an artist. I said, you know, maybe I'll take, uh, I think I'm going to take a year off. I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work out, I'll call you back. And then she says, yeah, don't bother. She was wow. so mad. Yeah. She was so mad I quit on a Sunday. You know? <laughs> on a Sunday? <laughs> no, because you know what? Listen, I said, if I go to work tomorrow, yeah. maybe I'm not going to focus on this. Of course. Well, what, what that and just happening? Yeah, of course. It just happened. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to get comfortable with a paycheck, and I won't focus on this. And I think the issue with that is, is I, yeah, I wouldn't have done what I did. I wouldn't have got all the rid of all the furniture and just said like, okay, I got to focus on this. And I thought that, well, what's the worst that could happen? I'm always already homeless, so I go broke, you know? Yeah. I mean, I didn't have much money to begin with at that point anyway. Yeah. So you just went why not in. try it? Yeah. yeah. So I did it, and I really focused, and I, and I met the people who bought the piece, and they ended up being like really big art collectors who are very dear friends of mine now as well. And uh, I think they have like 20-something pieces now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But they have the really nice people. I think they, like, you know, they... They donate so much for charities and just really yeah. nice people. And and and, and it honestly, just I was on fire right after that, like four months after starting to make artwork. Wow, I was just busy. That's what I was gonna say. Like, what's the what's the transition there? Like, so do these guys keep buying? Then it, does it become a word of mouth? Like, also, what year is this for context? Just because like twelve years, so uh, twenty ten. Okay, so social beginning at twenty ten. Just. No, it was just, there, there was no Instagram. It yeah. was yeah. just kind of, I think, just coming out. Yeah, just, yeah. I think, just, yeah, it's 2010. Yeah. yeah, it was just coming out. So at that point, how are you marketing yourself? Like, how, you know what I mean? How, how are people finding out that Daniel paints and this is, these are his paintings? I think that, I don't know. Was there Instagram then? In the 2010, it just started. It just oh, started. I think it, no, no, actually, no, no, you're right. It actually just started yeah. then. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, I think it was like a little bit of, Instagram helps. Obviously, people can see what you're doing, but. You know, what was I really doing though? It's not like I was a professional artist. And yeah. I think that, you know, people that knew me in the city were, you know, genuinely liked the artwork I was making. So, you know, people talked about it a lot and, and, um, you know, just, I, I would do different events and then I ended up doing, oh yeah, I did an art show in, in Toronto at the convention center and, uh, Mike Wackerly from the dragons then came yeah. in and he bought the whole show. Wow, yeah, that's our guy. Yeah, he did? Like, yeah, yeah, shout out the, the whack. He's the best. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah. Wow. So he just came, bought everything. <laughs> yeah, he just came in. He's like, "What do you have left?" I'm like, "The show just started." He's like, "I'll take it all." What a legend. That's so sick. Yeah. He's the best. So those are like moments of validation for you of like, yeah. oh, I'm doing the right thing. I'm these are these are huge people, right? That yeah. are yeah that are saying yeah. these things to yeah. you. Yeah. So um, I did that, and then you know I, uh, I I had done some interviews, and then they started calling me the next Andy Warhol, and it's just that's like that's what I was saying beforehand. Yeah, 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 yeah Andy it was Warhol. Just thing. like one thing after another. Um, Do you like that comparison? Uh, I mean, <laughs> listen, Andy Warhol's you know an artist that we all look up to. I think is. I mean, even if, I mean, you should watch actually the diaries of Andy Warhol. Okay. You, you get a better appreciation. Because I think a lot of people just look at artwork and they think, man, I don't like this. And I think, you know, who, what's the big deal about Andy Warhol? Yeah. It's not so much that, it's what they did at that time, um, influences they had on other artists yeah. and, and the art world, which him is, it's, there's a lot. If, come on. You know, the, the Andy Warhol fund still, still makes millions of dollars and he's not even around. They just sold last week. Andy Warhol, $195 million. Wow. Biggest sale of an American artist in history. Which one piece? Yeah. The <coughs> his original Marilyn Monroe. Damn. One piece last week. So there you go. So um, uh, as far as the comparison, I think a lot of people will compare 
I mean, we we do we both do a lot of portraits. We both do a lot of celebrity stuff, and there's some of the meaning behind the pieces are are, are similar. I noticed that after. I didn't even notice it myself. Yeah, yeah. You know? When people start seeing uh, it, not so much the look, and I, I I think that's where the comparison may come from, um, which is fine with me. Listen, if I could fill fill half the shoes of Andy Warhol's, uh, yeah, you know, then I'd you'd be pretty happy with myself. Do you feel like you've had that kind of impact, let's say, on Toronto in terms of influencing other artists to kind of break out of their shell and, and do their thing as well because you were I, mean, I, I don't want to say pret- I don't, I don't want to be pretentious no but I yes, think I think you were in a you were in a time where a lot of like you were one of the really f- yeah you were one of the first like to yeah, be honest right and now first, yeah. now you look and there's a lot of people obviously there's right? a lot of people doing it you know so I think there was some key people and you were one of them that really like yeah showed people that hey you can do this for a living if you like doing it there was really no one back when yeah. I was doing 2010, it there was nobody nobody no, nobody that, or, no that or nobody you would, serious. nobody that was taking it seriously. I, I don't want to say that because there's a lot of great Canadian artists. Of course, the, the, there's been art there for a long time. Uh, more on a more mainstream, I guess. Yes. I don't want to say popularity, but yeah. popular or or known. Yeah. I guess maybe I don't know. Um, I don't want to use the wrong word. Do you mentor yeah. anyone right now, like younger artists? Do they ever ask I mean, you for advice? People will call all yeah. the time, or mad, like, I get artists that DM all the time just to, you know, they have questions, and or a lot of people ask me yeah. how I do my artwork, which yeah. I, I never answer. <laughs> there you go. You can't give yeah. the sauce away. No, I mean, there, I I post a lot on Instagram, but I, I, it took me years to figure out a lot of stuff and how you, you know, your steps and how you make stuff. And I mean, my ideas are my ideas. I can't really teach people that either. What what really like when you're about to make a piece? What's what's what kind of inspiration are you? Are you looking to get like what are what are you taking to make that piece? I want to tell a story, yeah, and um, you know, so I'll find a story that inspires me, yeah, and then from there I'll just kind of, you know, okay, what am I going to do with that story? What's it going to look like? And all right, what materials can I get to tell that story? Yeah, and are the materials the right colors to go with this story? Right, so there's a lot of moving pieces to it, but yeah, and there, I I always you know it's funny at the beginning I used to think, am I going to run out of ideas? And uh, it's crazy. Just like the more you work with your creative juices, the more it just like it becomes yeah. a power. And the less you use it, the less you're like get back into that. Oh, what am I gonna do? It's like a muscle. Yeah, it's yeah. a muscle. Yeah. yeah, it really is. It really is. Do you have a, Do you have like a, a team that works with you, or are you just a one man show? Well, I have a t- I have a, a team of people that do separate stuff. Okay. Creating the artwork? No, it's just me. Just you. But for my shows, I have a team. For my sponsorships, I have a team. You know. Uh, do you have a studio right now? Yeah, it's down the street. Down the street, but you don't have one in Toronto right now, right? Uh, I have one in Toronto. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. I just haven't been back in a bit. Yeah. Recently. Um, but I think, you know, I, I'm traveling a lot with work, you know, so yeah. uh, I'll be a little bit there in the summer and I got used to the sun. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell it's you. It's easy to get Guys. used to. Bro. It's <laughs> easy to get used to. Shit, it's I know. Really, it's hard. I went back. I went back like, uh, now the weather's nice. I went back a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. You were back was, too. Yeah. yeah you were back, back there too. Oh my God. It was like a Tim Burton movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where did the sun go? <laughs> yeah, it's, the worst. Get back. it's crazy. But I have a question. Was there was there like um like an it moment like something specific happened where you're like okay this is really it like I've I've I don't want to say I've made it because I feel like oh. anyone will always say like I can right. I can be bigger right but was there a moment where where you're like holy fuck like I'm really here like I'm on this stage type of thing like this is crazy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I've had, listen, I've had a lot of great stuff. Yeah. No, I've had a lot of great stuff. I don't think I ever get to the point where I feel like this is it. I've made it mm-hmm. because you can be up here and then down there the next day. Yeah. So I never take that. I never get into that train of thought because I find you get too comfortable. Yeah. And you just, you, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like a great boxers, you know, you see them, they're animals at the beginning, boom, 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 all these wins. And then all of a sudden they get money and then like, and then they're partying and then this and then that, and yeah. then they go into the ring and they're sloppy Joe. Yeah. <laughs> it's because they got comfortable. The training and the hunger was not there anymore. Yeah. For me, I always have that, like, mm, you can have nothing. Yeah. You're only as good as your last day. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of cool stuff, you know, making artwork for the Pope and, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this stuff, it's on my Instagram. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got to meet him? Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, fucking sure, unreal. Sure. Yeah, we want to see. <laughs> like, that's the next that's level. Like, I was going to say, like, I thought you were going to say, like, a fucking... Like an athlete like, or yeah, something? And this guy said, no, I've done artwork for course. athletes. I mean, I've done, uh, uh, you know. That's just different. It's just different. That's like the queen. Yeah, like, yeah. That's like the scene that's... There's only a couple people up there. You know, it's so funny. So we, we were... I'll tell the story where I'm looking. So, I, we, you know, we're on our way to meet... The, so I got a, a, an invitation. How does that happen? Yeah, first of all. Well, I, I donate a lot for children's charities, and one of them happened to be one that the Pope was involved in. So oh, they cool. said... Hey, this sent me an invitation. Which the Pope would like to invite you to the Vatican. Wow! And and, uh, and I, I thought it was a joke. I wrote LOL. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So I went down, and you know, so nervous going in. I went with uh, actually Mr. Brainwash was there. Nice. My friend Domingo Zapata was there. It was the three artists. Nice. Um, um, and we go in, and the Pope comes in, and he says, "Daniel, please pray for me." I was shaking my hand. I said, "Throwing a couple for me too." Huh? <laughs> yeah, no shit, right? Yeah. You're you're the gotta pray for the me, guy. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta pray for uh, me. Yeah, I, but you don't want me praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think we're getting to. That's it. a crazy experience, though. Man. Yeah, it was. Oh, here it is. The, you know, I was wow. smi- I was smiling the Look whole you time. Really suited up and everything. <laughs> I saw. I'm smiling the whole time. That's they t- they took one picture of me. <laughs> I look like Mr. Corleone <laughs> with the Pope. You look, hey, what are you, you look talking about? Nice like to the, meet like you. Like the Pope owes me money or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you can give it to me next week. <laughs> You're a good boy. <laughs> no, but th- that's that's a crazy Pretty experience, cool, man. Yeah. That's a crazy experience. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask like about your art itself because mm. I see that you also do the sculptures, right. the statues and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. When did you start doing that and what made you want to kind of adapt to doing things that way with as the well? The sculptures? Yeah. Which are sick. They're so so sick. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I I think, you know, as an artist, I like to branch out into other, you know, areas of creativity. So I started, you know, I started doing sketches. Okay, what would my sculpture be? And then I, you know, there always has to be some meaning behind stuff I do. And I wanted... I wanted the sculptures to have uh, a meaning. So the, everyone thinks they're rabbits. They're not rabbits. Yumi means dream in Japanese. Said that yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's I'm actually a rabbit. child wearing bunny rabbit pajamas. Wow. And it's a genderless child, so it represents everyone. Okay. And Yumi represents the child that becomes the person they're supposed to be and follows their dreams. Even if it means wearing bunny rabbit pajamas every day, you do it. I like it. Right? That's cool. Because I, I didn't follow my dreams originally, yeah. and, and you know, I was miserable. And then once I decided to... Not as a career. Once I decided to, you know, I'm just going to do something I love to do every day. That was my dream. And I was happy, you know. So th- that character is sort of to inspire. That's cool. So, like, no matter what you're doing, even if you look funny for the time yeah, being. Yeah, who or, cares? Like, yeah, whatever. Like, you you want to be, uh, uh, you, you want to dress up the way you want to dress up. You want to like the gender you want to like. Or you yeah. want to, you, you feel like you're the gender you are. Then just do it. Who yeah, cares? Yeah. You know, it's just it's tiring hearing about media and like people are still racist and they're st- they're against yeah. people who are gay or they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Know. Let yeah, people know. do what they want to <laughs> do. Yeah. It's true. It's what true. do you care? Yeah. Live your own life. Why yeah. are people angry about I these know. things, right? So this character sort of represents that. Dope. And uh, so I've been doing that for six years and now I have the new character Kuma, which is like it's because there's gonna be like a storyline with it. Like or Yumi's the child and then Kuma's this like every child needs a you know sidekick and so that's his bear and so cool. So I started doing that. But as far as like you're saying moments where you think yeah I've made it um you know I've always I think a dream is always to you know eventually be in a museum one day or do something with a museum and and I, I don't know. I just thought maybe a couple of weeks ago, I thought, you know what? I, I, I Maybe I'm just never going to get into a museum, you know, or maybe yeah. in a museum and never be interested in doing it. Why do you, why do you say that? Because I think like you're, you're killing it. No, I think sometimes. Is it just yeah, your, yeah, type, yeah, your I, type I, I, of I, art, maybe? I think it's the type of art. Uh, well, that's, I don't know what it is, yeah. you know, but I just thought like, hey, you know, I'm popular in Canada and I thought, Maybe one day, maybe they'll like my stuff, you know? Does that, does and that, that usually happen, though, like when artists pass? Is that like kind of the... the, the yeah, and like, do I have to pass away? Yeah, I mean, I want to be, I wanna be alive. No, I don't think it necessarily yeah. has to happen. But, you know, I think I've been so busy over the last 12 years. I've never really needed a lot of galleries to sell my artwork. Yeah. So I think, you know, they, they look at that in museums and, and um, you know, so... 
it is what it is. But now September 29th, I'm doing a 20 foot piece for the AGO for their for their art uh, event. So technically, you're in. <laughs> you're in. So, <laughs> so I'm pretty much in now. <laughs> no, no. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. That's about huge, that. man. Congrats. And that's massive. Yeah. For me, uh, it's an accomplishment. But then again, I uh, still never would say, yeah, I made it. Now it's like, what's next? What can I do? How do I build? How do I get my artwork to be better, yeah. more technical? And is there anyone that you're like oh. always dreamed of? I don't know. Um, Any, maybe I Elon know. Musk. Yeah, that'd yeah. be dope. <laughs> that would be cool. cool. Be I and, and uh, I, I, you know, I, I've made a lot of portraits of people and and uh, a lot of like old icons or presidents, and I think him just because. I mean, he's really someone who cares about changing the world, yeah, which is really cool. So I think that for me is a very inspiring, intelligent yeah. uh, person. That not only would I like to meet, but yeah, maybe make a piece of artwork or have artwork for him. Yeah, if when you're out there, <laughs> <laughs> if you're Elon, listening, Elon, come on, bro. Um, there's a lot of young artists that watch our show as well. Oh, cool. And and I want to ask because I feel like there's so many different outlets for you to market your art. Right, like you have you have a studio, you have shows as well, you have online presence as well. Yeah, what has been the most important for you? What's the most important thing to be become to be successful? No, no, just to be part of like, if let's say you're getting into art or maybe you're a couple yeah. years into art. Yeah, what would you tell someone to focus on? Would you would it be to open your own studio? Would it be to mm -hmm. be part of shows? Would it be that. to just focus on social media, like, because now it's a different time as well. Well, right? I, you know, I I think it's just it's a mixture of things. Yeah. It's obviously work your ass off every day yeah i still work so 12 years later i still work seven days a week you know so i think the work ethic is a big one okay definitely social media and definitely like you really just it really matters networking is very big yeah you know so you know, i'll work all day but i'm out every night yeah. you know go out there talk to people meet people i know a lot of artists they don't you know they're they they're the, sort yeah. of introverted, yeah. which is fine. I I'm actually a very shy person, but I'm still always out there and I push myself to do it. You know, as artists, we can get comfortable in our in a little cave yeah. a room like this would be amazing to make artwork because it's just like no one's around. Yeah. You know, so yeah, you just have to really be out there. You know, meet people that love artwork, let yeah. people know what you're doing. Yeah. And, and and then it'll come, you know. Do you and think like being co like super I like super confident in your work too, like at the beginning? Because you were even saying like you didn't want to like, you didn't really like plan to sell it or anything like right. that. Was it, was it a confidence thing where you like maybe people won't like it? Because I think a lot of artists now when they start they kind of like don't oh, show anyone. Did, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I thought it was quite good. Yeah. I just, it was so different. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if people would like yeah. it. So it's not that I think, oh, I don't know if anybody's going to like it. Okay. It was more, I don't know, it's very new. Yeah. Maybe they like it, maybe they don't. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Because I'm having a good time doing it. I think that's an important character. Yeah. Like, you don't care. The, I don't that care. Part, that's, that's what it is, yeah. right? And I think it's very important to understand how to value your artwork. I mean, it's probably changed over time for you as well. Like what, no, how you used to value it before is different now. Yeah, of course. I mean, it changes. It depends on what you're doing and how, you many, see, like, how okay. many years you're doing, what yeah. events you've done, and like what milestones yeah. have happened to you, right? And and you know, slowly things increase. Mine was a little bit of a different situation because of that first one selling, and it wasn't me selling it. So it sort of sent a benchmark okay. to to where they would start at. Yeah, it's a great and benchmark. Is it was a good one, yeah. and. Um, so it allowed me to kind of move from there, yeah. you know, because I couldn't really go less than that, yeah. which was a tough situation for me too, because there wasn't much history to my career. There yeah, wasn't. You were new, yeah. right? Oh, well, yeah. how long you been selling artwork for? Yeah. Oh, well, last Thursday. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. so, yeah. so you you know, because if up. you tell someone that price, they're going to go, show me your resume. But yeah. the thing is, um, luckily, people really loved the artwork. And it was it was an okay value for them. Yeah. So, you know, things just kind of changed over time, and you know, I increased slowly, 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 and yeah. you know, and then you know, I, like I said, as milestones happen. So, I don't know. I, uh, for someone who hasn't sold, I don't know. Maybe just go go into galleries and s see what people are doing and pricing stuff out, and yeah. you know, or a lot of artists don't want to sell anything they're making, and yeah. 
<laughs> they'll say, oh, how are you going to let this one go? I'm like, yeah, let them all go. <laughs> let, <laughs> it's no, reason, it's okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm excited to create the next one. Yeah. And I actually enjoy my pieces so much more when I see them in the space they were yeah. meant to be in. You go, oh, man, I, I'll go to people's houses and uh, they'll catch me and I'm just staring at my artwork. And I'm like, oh no, this is so amazing, and and it's it's because I always see them in my studio, yeah. but the, you know it's kind of like this fate of where your piece was supposed to be one yeah. day, and you see it there, and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. I think with social media, it's given people something to kind of start basing things off of. Right. Yeah. 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 It and you had the finance background too, a little bit. So yeah, I like had the finance background. I was always good with people, and yeah. and uh, I'm I'm pretty organized. My work ethic, if I, it didn't matter what job I had, even if it's this, I always worked my ass off. And so I think it's, it's, um, it's like I said, it's a mixture of everything, you know, yeah. success doesn't just come because one person buys something. Yeah. It's also taking chances. I quit my job. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't have a paycheck coming. Yeah. That money wasn't going to last me very long. I spent it all on materials for my apartment to turn into a studio. Wow. I checked just I spent it all. Do you remember how so it's fast? Not like, uh, yeah, I had this money, and that's all. That's it. I'm retired. No, I had to. I quit my job. I didn't have any more money coming in, and I just said, whatever. I'm going to buy a bunch of canvases. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to really focus on it. And everything I've imagined has come real. Be but I, but I work towards those dreams. You know, it's so easy to say, yeah, I want something, and or I hope I win the lottery one day. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you're not going to win if you don't play either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, so, yeah, it's hard work. The networking, it's it's a lot of stuff. It's yeah. a lot of stuff. It's That's, not an easy job. Yeah, um, I know you recently got into NFTs as well. I did. So tell us about that a little bit, because I think that's super interesting. Mm, so, uh, you know, people have been asking me for about the last year and a half to, to create NFTs, and I thought, you know, I don't, I don't really want to just digitize for two reasons. I don't want to digitize the, the wall pieces I've made. One being I didn't want to take images of you know, artworks that collectors have bought and then start selling them digitally. Yeah. And then the second was there wasn't any meaning behind it. I mean, you know, it's kind of like selling out to, to a paycheck and yeah. I'm not one for that, you know. It's great to make money, but I want to do it the, the right way and it has to be meaningful. And so, you know, after about a year, people kept asking and asking and I thought, well, you know, what I could do is maybe the Yumi. And I said, you know, what well, the correlation between Yumi and that character and crypto and NFTs was... You know, if you asked anybody 10 years ago about cryptocurrency or digital artworks being displayed in a metaverse, someone would have told you it was a sci-fi movie. Yep. Or they were crazy. Or you're psycho, yeah. Yeah, or you're nuts. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's never going to happen, yeah. right? These people really believed in it, and now they're changing the world for what we see in front of us now. But, the, you know, the world gradually changes like that. Now it's going like this. Yeah. Everything's yeah. changing. So... You know, that's the correlation between you, me, a dreamer, being the person you want to be, not listening to anybody. So everyone, even when I sold my first five pieces, friends of mine would tell me, oh, it's really hard. You, I don't know how you're going to do this. You shouldn't have quit your job. Wow. Yeah. But people are going to do that in anything yeah. because a lot of people feel comfortable bringing you down to where they are for whatever reason. And, you know, a lot of people may not want you to succeed because they're not happy with their own situation. So I just say, don't focus on that. Misery focus, fo company. Misery Loves Company. Just focus on your dream and, you know, just no looking back. Would you say that every artist needs to be a little bit insane? Oh, wow. That's a funny question. <laughs> yeah. So like, are, you, are, you, are you insane? Uh, is what I'm asking. Should we leave should we exit no. you know who i noticed you had on here who he's uh yeah every artist is i think are you talking about peter <laughs> <laughs> peter's our guy peter, peter! <laughs> i love peter he's you such he's such a gem <laughs> yes <laughs> we should facetime peter <laughs> the best guy on the planet best guy and like oh, i'm yeah. a huge fan of his art um and he's insane yeah He'll also tell you he's insane you know what i mean he knows it yeah. So that's why I ask. I but Peter's think. brilliant, though. Yeah, he is. You know, it's he funny, really actually. So Peter's um, um, very, he's a great friend of mine. He's, he, he's, uh, he's, yeah, is he nuts? Yeah, I think Peter is nuts. <laughs> yeah, but me too. So am I. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. But Peter, you can see him in the artwork. Yeah. And he's just such a, he's such a talented artist. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I envy his style artwork. Uh, envy for, because I wish I was, 
uh, I wish I could paint like him, actually. You know, he's got a unique style. He's got a unique style, and I love it. And I would never try and um, do any of the stuff he does. I just couldn't. It's yeah. just it, it, it goes with his personality. It's perfect. I'm sure the, he'll say the same thing about you, though, and your art. Yeah. I, Peter's amazing. Yeah. yeah, we tried to paint a couple times together and and make some pieces. Yeah, yeah. Well, how was it, Peter? <laughs> how was the collaboration oh, yeah. on the great, art? Yeah, great, great. Yeah, great. I can't keep up with him. Really? Eh? Oh, he's a machine. He's a machine. He's literally a machine. I've never seen he's anybody with more he's energy. Just, how old is he? He's sixty, just over sixty. It's crazy. He's like, say, I think he's sixty-one. Man, he's got so much energy. I know. Into his his studio, and you, you like you leave. Like exhausted. <laughs> I'm, ex I'm exhausted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Here, oh, there, yeah. boom, bang, boom, yeah. painting. All of a sudden, he's playing the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he FaceTimes me all the time. He's and, such a bad. The phone is just set up, and he's just ripping the guitar. Like, I have pictures in my phone. I have pictures in my phone. He's amazing. Yeah, Peter's amazing. Hold on, anyway, take a picture from me. Ready? Let's go. Let's yeah, no, he, uh, I, 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 I think he's a great example. Peter's absolutely, he's a lunatic. He's absolutely yeah. insane. But that's why I asked our, 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 people say this. All good artists need to be a little bit, in, at least a little bit insane. Peter, uh, it's just funny. <laughs> I have pictures of him with the guitar, me FaceTiming him with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I, I think... It's not nuts, but I think, yeah, a little bit out there. Yeah. It's funny. I feel like you have to have different perspectives. I was just talking to someone th this morning, actually, and they yeah. said, so they're going to speak in my documentary. I'm doing a documentary on, uh, on my life. And uh, just to, to inspire people, you know, about the being homeless. Because I think a lot of people come to my shows. A lot of people have liked my artwork for all these years. Nobody really understands the, the mechanics story. behind it. Yeah. And oh. how, how it got to what it is. You know, so uh, I wanted to do something not only to inspire people, like we're talking about, to, to you know, to be themselves and, and, and just do something that makes them happy, yeah. but also for people to understand what my artwork is and what it means, right? So w one of the artists I was speaking to, I said, oh, well, you know, like, so we're going to do an interview, you talk, and they'll ask you some questions, and then they said, yeah, I'm going to tell them you're fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what works, okay. <laughs> I guess I guess. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really? Curious. I'm curious, like, um, that 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 whole. I guess you said it was five years homeless. Yeah. Like, break it down for us, because that first of all, that's it's not like six months or three months homeless. Like we're talking. Five years goes by pretty quick. Five years. Fuck, man, that's crazy. Rains, like, like what was what was happening at that time? Like, why was that happening? Why did it? Why like, was why, why were yeah? Why did you end up homeless? I don't want to get into that. You don't want to get thing. into that. No, okay, it was just in you know, the family stuff. Yeah. Okay. And all this, right? Okay, that's fair. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm asking more. Just what did I do? Yeah. What's the experience? Yeah. You know, back then there were a lot of street kids. Okay. There were a lot, and you know, I met them, and you know, a lot of us hung out together, and and it was the '90s. The rave scene was big, and I would go to a party five nights a week, six nights a week. Just so I didn't have to sleep outside. Wow. So you'd stay there and, you know, and then you would try and, like, stay at someone's house or you'd sleep in the park or sometimes in, the, like, they had a $2 movie theater in Scarborough at the movie theater. So yeah. I'd go in there and sleep in different theaters. And I even remember sleeping in a mall bathroom one time. Wow. You know, because it was so cold. Um, I don't know, man. Five years, I, went, five years went by. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it just that sounds It's like crazy. Forever. It's insane. Yeah. Do you wish that it that didn't happen, or did it help you become who you are today? Oh, I would never. I wouldn't even create be creating my artwork. Yeah, I know. I don't want to say I wouldn't be creating artwork. The mechanics behind it would have never happened. Yeah, yeah. It would have been different. Yeah, telling people stories because I wanted to tell people stories, yeah. including mine. So no, that would have never happened. I wouldn't have. It made me a better person. Stuff. It was tough. It was a lot of you know, bad things that happened to me, but. Um, definitely made me a better person. Understand the world better, understand people better, yeah. and uh, more in touch with people's feelings. And I think, I mean, yeah. they, they, you always say, like, any any of the goats, any of the greatest stories in the world usually come with a lot of adversity. Of, of course. Yeah. Overcoming adversity. Yeah. Yeah. So it's adversity. probably just, it's probably just, that's a portion of, of mm. your story. Right? Is that the hardest thing you've had to overcome? 
That for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that definitely. And I, you'll, you'll see even a lot of the, like the iconic celebrity, all that sort of stuff that I've done. They're all they're all people that had really tough upbringing. Yeah, they had a really tough path to, you know, yeah, their yeah. their their final. I don't know. I don't want to say final goal, but to where they got. Yeah. So that was inspiring for me. So, you know, I, I'm selective on who I pick as well. Yeah with that as well in the doc do you get into it a little bit more yeah i get into all that yeah oh, yeah. Okay. yeah all right so we're saving it for the doc when's the doc <laughs> is there, is there it should line? it should be ready for the festivals next this fall nice. uh, yeah, right is this on. fall this fall Oof, oh, it's, yeah. fast. <laughs> it's coming well, yeah we finished filming i think end of june and then at it all summer and then um i think eventually like hot docs and like film festivals yeah yeah, 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 yeah. you have your you, you, well willing they take it but i think we're already gonna be in hot docs but you have yeah. one of your pieces in uh, Mademoiselle. Three pieces, yeah. yeah you did some, some did you market? see them? I said, well, we do their marketing. Oh, so we got to see everything, right? We we're not there, but our whole yeah, team's yeah. there and stuff. They're showing us everything. And, and Peter actually FaceTimed me and, and showed me your big piece, I guess, on the stairwell. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Insane. Yeah, it's Insane. cool. That's huh? beautiful, bro. He did a great job with that, right? Oh, unreal. Yeah. He did something very unique. Like, you don't find that kind of yeah. venue in, in... Peter's another one with energy. Oh, love oh. it. He should be. In. Peter's an artist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he is in his own in way. way. In, in his, his own, own way, way right? Peter's an artist. We're actually going to do a podcast with him at Mademoiselle. So we're going to get your art in the background. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's crazy that like I think your your art's everywhere in Toronto, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. Like you it do is. like so I'm just working and, like, on that here now. You do graffiti too, right? Graffiti, like you've done some, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some murals in New York. Is there anything coming. you say no to? Is someone come to you and say like, yo, I want something like this? You're like, no, I'm not doing No, that. all the time, yeah. If it doesn't if it doesn't uh, match up with my style or or you know, something a story I want to tell. Yeah. I mean if it's just not does it mesh? Yeah. No. For a paycheck, no. It's like you, I said, you were I like that the whole time, even in the beginning, just not for a paycheck. No, I, yeah. I would say, yeah, yeah. When I, I was, even when I was not, you know, so popular, or not that I'm so popular, but I'm just, you, what, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Even when I was starting out, I would say no, because I, I you know, I had a vision of what my art was going to be and what it was going to mean. And if it didn't make sense, it didn't make sense, you know? Because people will ask me to make a picture of their dog, I say no. And you're like, this is not me. Well, because the thing is, I'm not passionate about your dog. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't it's know true, your dog. It's true. I don't know your dog. And that's going to come through the art, too. It's going to be torture for me to make it. Yeah. And it's just, you're not going to get the best piece out of me. Yeah. So unless it's a commission or something, I feel like, oh, man, I really want to make this. Yeah. Then it's never going to come out great. So I don't do yeah. it. Yeah. That's cool, though. You're in a position to kind of pick and choose. Like, yeah. I'm curious. Cool. Is, there, like, is, there, is there anything significant you've turned down? Like, people would probably think you're a fucking lunatic for, for not doing yeah, <laughs> but um, probably shouldn't bring it. <laughs> no, but it's, be it's better not to. But I, mean, it's, I don't take them because I, I'm trying to hurt anybody. Yeah. Or it just doesn't, it doesn't match up with what I want to do. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. fit, right? So it's actually be it's better for them too. I mean, yeah. you, you want an artist who really believes in what you want to do. I'm being honest. And it's just maybe it's a project for for someone else that will be passionate about it and that can do a better job. I mean, yeah. that's, that's all it is. Yeah. What doing, kind I'm doing them a favor. Yeah. What, what kind of advice do you have for anyone starting? In art, yeah, it's just it's work really hard. Yeah, yeah, just really focus and don't listen to anybody, and just don't look back. Just like really focus on something and just move your ass. Yeah, yeah. I think people like you have paved the way for young artists, though. Straight up. Yeah, I, I think so. you Thanks, have. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks. Honestly. Because yeah. you can see someone with a like, and I'm sure many people don't know your story. They just see you and they're like, oh, he probably just fucking. Ended up just killing it all of a sudden. And, yeah. But it's like your story is no, insane. No. Like, and it says, yeah, you got to take a lot. There's a lot of risks and a lot of chances you have to take. I know. think people just realize they can do it for a living. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. And then obviously the social media aspect has, has, has really furthered that. Right. right. Yeah. People are like, oh, fuck. Okay. They can watch you every day on social media. And yeah. See what you're doing. And that's kind of yeah. them a little bit of hope. Like, oh, fuck. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, this is what I want to do. And, sure, and, sure. And here's a path. Do you think that there's people that are just getting into art because they see people like you just fucking killing it, selling, oh, yeah, selling yeah, shit, and they're yeah, like, oh, yeah. I could fucking do that and sell it for fucking whatever? Like, do yeah, you see that happening? Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people. But it shows through the artwork. They're trying to copy someone else who's popular, or like uh, doing like yeah. stupid Instagram videos. Yeah. So like, look at me, look at me, look at what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, like they're, you're just, not, they're just doing who, it for the who wrong. Who are you reason. fooling? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just do great artwork. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know, so, you know. Um, so I was, I was telling the rest. I, of the I feel like people see like you, like guys like you, guys like Peter, guys like Richardi, guys like Diogo that are doing things and obviously making good money, and they're just like, yo, like 
What the fuck did it take to do that? And meanwhile, it took a lot to do that. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot That's of work, and I think you know you can. It's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of work. Just focus on your art. Yeah, That's it. yeah, yeah. Stop trying. You know, I think people really need to stop trying to impress. Yeah, and just do something you want to do. Yeah, and it'll come through. It'll show through your artwork. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Give him the question, bro. Yeah, I have the NFTs coming out in July. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. You guys, uh, we can follow I'm going like to check them out. I'm going to check them out. Twitter's. Uh, yeah. I, 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 bro, I, I think we're going to need a, a fucking. Okay. Thank you. This is what I was just. I think we're going to need a sculpture, bro. We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna work on building a studio here. Sure. That's our next Great. We're, we're renting this for now. We did one season here, but we're going we're gonna to get our own studio here. So we're going to get it. We, we need the sculpture. I was, I was saying before <laughs> you came on. I love the fucking sculpture. They look so sick. They're yeah, so sick, thanks, bro. They're yeah, so we're sick. Gonna, we're going to have to hit you up. Nice. Yeah, anytime. For the, for, the, uh, for the set. Yeah, this was fun. Uh, thanks yeah. for having me, guys. No, no, no. For of sure. course. Yeah, of we course. got one famous question for you. Okay. We ask everybody, okay? We're the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. Okay. What do you think of the term Money Buys Happiness? I think it's bullshit. <laughs> Fair enough. The <laughs> this, this <laughs> change the name, Jason. We're changing the name right after this. <laughs> no, listen. I, I think it, I think money uh, money definitely makes things easier. It doesn't make you happy though. Yeah. You've seen both sides. You've seen no money. I've and been seen, miserable when yeah. I had money. It wow. doesn't matter, guys. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, uh, don't you don't have to change it. No, no. I just um, yeah. I, I I think that. Uh, do, like I said, doing something you love makes you happy. Yeah. I had no money then, when I, but I was happy as a pig in shit making artwork. Yeah. That's it. You know, the money... All, money also brings in more problems, more headaches, more expectations, more this, more that. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. So, so it's bullshit. It. <laughs> it's done. All right, boys. <laughs> All right, this will be our last episode. This is ever. our last episode. We're closing up shop. Thanks. Uh, if you need Daniel Mazzoni to come ruin your business, uh, have me by... It'll only Get take him on your podcast. <laughs> 25 minutes. I can destroy your whole business. Thanks for coming. Holy fuck, guys. Daniel Mazzoli. What do you think of our name? Gentlemen. I think it's shit. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, I think the name is the name's great. And and it's and, and I actually really like the name, and I'll tell you why. Because it leads up to this question. Yeah. And it's actually interesting to, to hear what people have to say. Yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 and I and I gotta tell you. Some people will say, and I'm sure a lot of them will say, yeah, it does bring me bring happiness. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It, not that I don't agree with them. I actually don't. I don't. I don't agree with you. <laughs> no, I think it's so bullshit. Doesn't agree with you don't you. know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I just think that. Uh, yeah. yeah, guys, listen. Okay, great. You can. I, okay, I got to tell you. Okay. All right. <laughs> I would much rather. Okay, let me rephrase this. Okay. Yeah. I would much rather be depressed. In a nice house, on a beautiful couch, yeah. than to be depressed on like a cardboard box in an alleyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that that that's the best way to yeah. answer. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm comfortable and sad. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. That's what the money bride brings, yeah. because you can have. Uh, uh, you want an example? You're married for 20 years. She's your best friend. She passes away. Are you gonna have fun yeah. anymore in your house? Yeah. No, you're pretty fucking sad, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Life's what you make it. The, the, the money doesn't mean shit. Yeah. So if you don't t- really hang on to those moments and experiences with people and do stuff you love, money doesn't bring you shit. That's it. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> don't be sorry. Money doesn't bring <laughs> you shit. Welcome back to money doesn't bring you shit. No, you're absolutely right. It's true. Honestly, we, we, we yeah, that's, true. that's a perfect example. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, come on. You're right. You, you can wow. be on top here, and then maybe you, your loved one passes away, and you're just like, yeah. you're sad. Yeah, money, money doesn't and and if I, like, oh, I'm sad that day, I'll go buy Rolls Royce. Will it make me happy? Yeah. No, no. I'm sit around and drive around and cry. Yeah. Comfortably, though. In a Rolls Royce. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's driving me. Drive. Just keep driving. <laughs> Stop for caviar. <laughs> It's amazing, guys. Uh, where can everyone find you online? Did I answer that properly? <laughs> yes, you did it perfectly, bro. <laughs> uh, online, uh, my Instagram's uh, at Daniel Mazzoni Art. Yep. Uh, NFTs are um, for Twitter. Don't. Uh, at Yumi, uh, sorry, Yumi NFTs. And, and just my website at uh, www.danielmazzoniart.com. Nice. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, first yeah. of all, thank you so much. Thanks, boys. What a great shot. <laughs> it was an thank absolute you. pleasure. <laughs> 
guys, if you made it this far, we love and appreciate you so much. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, like the video. We, like we're gonna shoot for like what a thousand likes on this one? Yeah, it's got a thousand. Ten thousand likes. It's bullshit. Ten thousand <laughs> likes. Ten thousand likes. Ten thousand likes, and we're changing the name of the 10, podcast. Ten thousand likes before we go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Yes, honestly, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, you too, guys. Again, and we are out.